Okay, today I'm going to be shooting a little video uh, showing how I cut custom headstocks such as this or similar to this um, from a couple of things. One, this is a uh, pre fretted uh, neck, comes already with the fretboard glued on, the nice frets already put on there, and a paddle headstock where you can cut your own. Uh, own headstock and I bought this from CB Giddy. Uh, I'll put a link to their website down below in the description. So I'm going to be cutting, actually I'm going to be cutting a headstock just like this one uh, from, from this uh, neck here and then I'll also be showing how I do it with uh, the ones that I make up myself and you'll notice that this one does not have the fretboard on it. Uh, and I'll show you why here in just a little bit why I don't put the fretboard on there until after I cut the, uh, the headstock shape. Okay, to cut this on the CNC, one of the critical things to uh, keep in mind is you need to make sure you get this straight, uh, you know, parallel with your uh, gantry of your CNC. So what I've done here is I've uh, used the uh, spindle just to cut a couple of quarter inch holes, not, you know, just down, you know, three eighths or something like that. And then I use that to take a couple of old uh, bits and stick down in these holes and then use that as a guide to uh, get, make sure that I keep this straight. And then of course, once I get it clamped down securely, I remove them so that I don't hit them with the, uh, with the spindle. Um, I just put four clamps on this. This is the one thing that's a little tricky about using these necks that you buy that are already have the fret board and the frets on them. Uh, I probably probably can't see it now that I've got it clamped, but because the fret board and the frets are on there, I have actually under here there's a quarter inch uh, spacer. It's just a quarter inch piece of MDF that's basically cut the same uh, shape as this paddle here. And I just stick that under there to get the fretboard off. Otherwise, it would be setting uh, kind of cattywampus there. Uh, when I do the, uh, when I make up my own necks and get ready to do them, like I showed that one earlier, I think you'll notice that I don't have, I don't glue the fretboards on until after I've done this step. So I don't need to use that quarter inch spacer. But for the ones that I buy, and this is the last. Uh, last of the ones I bought several from CB Giddy and used them all up with this one. So um, once I uh, once I get rid of this one and, and use it up, I won't be uh, won't be needing that spacer anymore. Okay, the next thing I want to do uh, after I get this clamped up is I want to find the center of my neck, not the center of the paddle. Uh, when they glue these uh, extra strips on, because this is just a, about a one and a half inch piece right here down the middle, and then they glue these extra pieces on to form the paddle, they may or may not be the same. So if you measured this and then just divided that in two, you may end up with it slightly off from one side to the other. So what I want to do is I want to find my center line of what my neck is. And I know my neck should be approximately an inch and a half but you want to measure them because sometimes they vary, you know, a few thousands here, here and there. And this one is about uh, 1.52, so it's about 20 thousandths big. So I'm going to set my calipers to 760, which would be half of that. And just confirm that the little pencil mark that I put right here is in the center of the neck. If you're off a little bit. Nobody's probably going to be able to notice, but uh, you definitely don't want to get it off too much, uh, and you'll see why. Um, another thing that I'm doing here is I'm not just cutting just a custom shape, but this piece here is still pretty thick. So I want to measure that uh, before I put it on here so that I know what the thickness is and I can adjust my program. When they make these things, they uh, run them on a belt sander, I think, and sand them smooth. Uh, so they may not be exactly three-quarter. They may be a little less, but you need to know what that is so you know how much uh, to take off here. Because actually, 
Besides just cutting the shape, what I'm going to be doing is milling the back of this to get it down to where the overall thickness of this headstock is uh, 9 16 or 0.5625. And because if you try to leave it at three quarter and put your tuners in, there's not going to be enough tuners sticking up to really uh, work effectively. And you may not even be able to get it threaded on. So I like to run mine about uh, 9 16 of an inch. Okay, another step I do is I want to make sure that I get my zero set exact, uh, you know, as close to exact as I can. So because that mark in the center of the neck is so critical, I change this tool out and put something with a sharp point so that I can uh, get the zero set a little better. And then when I get done setting the zero, I'll just take it out and put this one eighth uh, down down cut end mill back in there. That's what I'm going to use to uh, cut the shape and also to mill the face of it. So I don't have to put this in here and tighten it up really good. I'm just snugging it up again, and now I can uh, set my zero. Okay, so I've got my X and Y zero set. I'm going to kind of confirm it because the way I've got the camera set, the camera's kind of in the way for me to see that. But I'm going to confirm that and then I can switch that bit out. Okay, once I have my bit changed back out, I'm going to move it to the center of the blank here and set my zero to the surface of the material. Now when I get go to zero, it should go down to just on the top of the material and over to that spot that I uh, set the zero for the X and Y uh, with the uh, V bit in. And it looks pretty good. Okay, so I've got it all ready to go here. I checked my thickness of this piece here and not counting the quarter inch spacer but just the headstock itself measured about 0.7. So I know that if I want to reduce this thickness to uh, 9 16 or 0.5625, I'm going to need to mill down about 0.1375, so just a little over an eighth of an inch. So I've got the first tool pass set up. I'm just going to run these one at a time uh, so I can stop and explain each one after it runs. So let's get it started up, and uh, I'll probably have to mute the uh, video here at this point because it's going to get loud but we'll uh, mill this down to size. Okay, so now I can take my calipers here and just kind of check and make sure that it milled about 1.375 down. So that, that that will leave me when I cut this out, uh, that'll leave me with about 9 16 uh, thick headstock there. So that's the first run. The second run also uses this 1 8 inch uh, down cut uh, bit. Uh, and some of you may be watching this and go, well, why isn't he using a bigger bit to clear this out since that's you know such a big pocket? And the reason is, one, I want to have it nice and smooth so I don't want to worry about having to change bits and maybe not getting the zero set just perfect and then I have some you know where you can see the two different bits and also because it's coming down in here where it's getting really tight so that bit will fit down in there so I just use that for the whole thing alright so now I'm going to load in the other program and what it's going to do is it's going to start at this depth start one and three uh, point one three seven five deep and it's only going to cut down about a quarter of an inch. 
I can't really cut it all the way through because you can see I've got the neck kind of sticking up in the air here. So if I tried to part it all out, things might move around and I don't want that. So I leave it nice and solid. The clamps, you can see they're just barely holding on to the corners to hold it down anyway. So uh, I just cut it down a quarter of an inch deep and then I can come back with uh, either a scroll saw or my band saw and cut you know just cut it out the rest of the way and leave it rough and then put it on my router table with a uh, flush trim router bit and use the quarter inch that I've already cut as my template and get it exact. So let's load up that next program and go ahead and get it going. <laughs> Okay, so now I've got the, uh, the shape of the headstock cut. I've got it milled down to where it's about 9 16 thick. Uh, and now what I need to do is figure out the holes that I'm going to put in here. I have three different programs set up. You'll notice that as a right-handed guitar, this one has one tuner on top and two on the bottom. Sometimes I make them with two on top, one on the bottom. The reason for that is Usually when you buy these tuners and you're buying right and left hand, they come in sets of three. So you get three left and three right, or three top, three bottom, however you want to call it. So when you, use, when you get a set of uh, six like that and you use one up here and the other two for the bottom, and these are different, you know, if you put on tuners before, you know that the gear part is supposed to go towards the bridge. So you have a difference of right and left. So... You know, whatever I've used, like if I've used one here and two here, then that means that I know that I, when I bought that set that I have two of these and one of these. So the next guitar I build will have two holes on top and one on the bottom. So for this one, um, I think I've got plenty because I just got some more. So I'm, for this one, I'm going to put two holes on top, which will actually be on the bottom because this is being ran like this so I'll have two holes here and one here but I have three different programs set up that I can call up where I can do it where it runs it whether it's one here and two here or I got to call up a different program and run two holes here one here or if I'm running a four stringer I can run two holes here and two holes here so let's load that program up and uh, put some holes in Okay, I'm back around here uh, in back at my shop. Uh, all the CNC work is done. You can see it. we've got the uh, basic shape uh, cut down most of the way there. We've got the uh, holes for the tuners already in. The only thing left to do uh, with these, and I actually ran four of them. I, I was going to show you how I do one of these without the uh, fretboard on it, but it's really uh, pretty much the same thing. The only difference is I don't use that spacer under here uh, Which makes it a little easier uh, And then I'll, once I get the neck cut out, or the headstock cut out, I'll glue the fretboard on those and fret them um, But yeah, the only thing left to do is cut this off with the band saw You could use a scroll saw or probably even a jigsaw or a lot of different ways to do it Like I said beginning of this video. I'm just showing you how I do it uh, because I was asked to. So, anyway, let's get started c cutting these off on the uh, bandsaw. Okay, as I mentioned earlier, uh, you know, on the CNC, I had to put this quarter inch MDF spacer on there to clamp it down. Same thing we hear when I'm using my 3 8 uh, flush trim bit. I need to put, uh, and I've used double sided tape just to put a, a spacer on there so that'll hold that flat and keep it off of that, that edge of the fretboard there. So when I get done with this one, I'll have to uh, 
lower this back down for the other three because since there's no fretboard on there, I can do this one just like this. It's much easier. All right, let's get started flushing these up. So there we have it. We've got all uh, all four of these done. So there we have it. We've got our head shape, uh, headstock all shaped with a nice fancy uh, shape there. The back of it also has this little decorative peak. I don't really know what you would call that, but I put it in there just so it'd be you know different than everybody else. Uh, and then I've already got my hole set up where uh, all I have to do is come finish drilling those through and then making them to the right size which they should be pretty close uh, sometimes you have to open them up a little depending on the, the type of tuners you have but anyway that I hope that answers some questions for anybody uh, I can't even remember who the couple of fellas were that asked me to do the video showing how I uh, do these headstocks but I hope uh, I hope y'all uh, might have learned something like I said this video is not to show other people the way to do it it's just simply the way I do it since I have a CNC okay so if you like this video uh, and you got anything out of it please hit the like and subscribe buttons down below uh, if you want to see what else I got coming up hit the little bell to get notifications when I upload a video I'll probably be going ahead and doing uh, different videos on how I do different things like I know I've already had been asked about how I do the neck pockets in either the boxes like that or cigar box or uh, the custom bodies that I do. I've had people want me to show how I do the custom bodies so uh, lots of things I'll be showing in the, in the near future so again hit the like and subscribe button hit the bell to get the notifications and as always I thank you very much for watching.